Mr. Bridges. Yes, do sir. they call you that in the town building? No, they do not. That's to me. That's my father's name. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Bridges. So you're the you're the guy. Let's let's go through some of the things you do for the town. First of all, okay. you're the social media guy. Yeah, technically, in the public outreach manager. Yeah. And so I'm in charge of all the social media, digital media, the okay. website. Yep. So the background is I was <clears throat> I spent I was part time for two years in the IT department, running the social media and kind of. Uh, I was in charge of redoing the new website. I was a project lead on that. Yep. Um, now I've left IT department and then now over to uh, town administration for public outreach. Okay. They've not replaced me back there, so I'm still doing, you know, when someone has a problem with the website, yeah. I still help them. Oh, that. I see. So you're, you, do it, you do it all pl plus the social media right. thing. Right. Um, we have the video recording program where, you know, FinCom and HEC gets... Um, is that your phone or my yeah, phone? It's me. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm just, we're just yeah. playing around. Okay. Here. So, where, how's that evolved? The social media. How long have you been doing it? Um, but I was only part time before with IT. So this will be like my third year in charge of it. So yep. what, we're, what we're trying to do is is get to set it up to where each department, they're all a little different. They all have different resources and staffing. Yep. Where each department can push out their own messages through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram if they want to, uh, blogs, that type of thing. I'm there to help them. Some I help a, lot, a little more than others. Yep. Others, others are doing really well uh, on their own. Yep. So it takes a while to build your audience. So I'm there to help with that outreach. And how, yeah, that's a pretty nice job working for the town, right? Yeah. I, I mean, is it a full-time job? It is now. I, when I moved over to town administration as a public outreach, in the public outreach position, that, that turned into full-time. Got it. And you also own a coffee shop? Yep. Yep, own a coffee now, shop. Now, why did you do that? Uh, we have a bike tour company as well. We just have, we get bike tours in the summer. Yeah. And so one of our friends, who's a realtor, was shown us a space at 15 Washington Street for the future of the bike tours. Because I know we're not going to be at this the current space for long. So. Oh, you're not? Not yeah, I don't know if it's one year or three more oh, years okay, or got it. you know, Mariah Mitchell's gonna develop that property in the future science center or whatever they're gonna do with that. Right. So we're always looking for just to have a backup plan. And she showed us the space at 15 Washington Street and just didn't really work out for bike tours, but we thought, you know what would go really well here? A coffee shop. And then Courtney, my wife, said, Call the handlebar. Perfect. And like, so we went down to Dune, had dinner, sat at the bar, pulled out the napkins, started drawing everything, and kinda like, ah, yeah, yeah, let's look into it. And then four months later, we were open. That is amazing. So we were planning on doing that. It, um, we wanted a space where, a teaching space where I could teach digital media and some of the leadership things that I do, but yep. also a space for the community yep. to use at night, whether it's teaching or uh, a lot of nonprofits have their board meetings there because not all of them have a big conference room. Yeah, great. So I don't charge them anything for it. They buy a couple cups of coffee. Yeah. I get people in the space. I've never been there before. So we do a lot of stuff like that. We've had uh, bike maintenance classes. Wow. Uh, so how, yeah, how's that going? I mean, so you that's a lot of things in the fire, right? Well, we don't we don't do any food. The pastries we get are from Wicked Bakery. Yeah. So we don't have a kitchen with lots of labor. Yeah, got it. My staff is keep it lean. Yeah. Right. My staff is amazing. I've got uh, Hannah, my head barista, is brilliant with coffee, and she's trained everybody. Everybody's oh, yeah. extremely nice and. Was that hard to, to learn? I, uh, you know, I've, I think everybody thinks at some point, at one time or another, they're going to open a coffee shop. Yeah. Because yeah. I'd like to actually be part of a coffee shop in Lubeck, Maine. Yeah. I mean, a, a really nice one like you've done. To sum it was up, that tough really, to set it up? Um, Business-wise, is because like, I was, you know, I ran foods for so long, so I kind of know how the restaurant oh, business works. Right, right, right. And I had started the bike tours, and so yeah, right. I had a little bit of. You know, reference with that, but coffee, I had no reference. I'm a coffee drinker like you, but I didn't really know how to make it. Yeah, right. Um, it's it's pretty, it's not too difficult to make a good cup of coffee or a good latte. It's extremely difficult to make 300 really good lattes per day. There's so many variables. So humidity changes and the volume of the water versus yeah. the grind of the espresso versus right. this, right. And how you pour it and it's really intricate. If you have 10 things in a coffee and one thing is off, the whole coffee's messed up, not just 10% of it. So to make coffee consistently is not so easy. 
but I got to give it all to my staff. They, um, I've learned how to delegate, and they've they've taken it and they're kind of running it. I'm there three or four times a day, in and out in the morning. Is, is it making money? Uh, yes. I mean, it's we're putting all the you've money. Got, in. I mean, it's got to be tough on the bean right now with the new place that's right across the place. I mean, it's you know, there's, there's definitely brand a lot of, new. Definitely a lot of coffee shops. There on, are now on Nantucket for sure. So I for guess sure. it comes down to. Uh, you know, hanging in there and they, doing it be, right. Yeah, I think everybody has their niche. You know, if you look at the like the corner table and the bean. Yeah. They have um, certain kind of food. But they use the same coffee, right? I think. The yeah, corn, I think they all use the. You don't use the bean coffee, do you? We don't use Nantucket coffee roasters. No, we did in the beginning. Yeah. Um, and then we won't, we were for a long time trying different espresso beans and right, different. Right. Right. We wanted to offer something different. Is there what, what kind of coffee do you use? We use a cup of coffee from DC. Okay. Yep. And they have a little bit of a Nantucket connection, and we looked at a lot of different ones. And their espresso blend, we feel, is perfect for milk-based drinks, mm -hmm. lattes, cappuccinos. Cool. And and we like coffee roasters too. We're just trying to offer something different to the island. Yeah. Now, how long have you lived out here? I came out here in 1999 for just one summer. The classic, classic story. Okay. And yeah. how did you meet your wife? Did you meet your wife out here? I met her eight years ago. She came out here for just one summer. I see. <laughs> and uh, I saw you on TV too. You guys were featured in a uh, real estate show, right? Yeah, we did HGTV. You were looking for a place to, to buy, right? Yeah. Did you so, end up buying something with them? What so, was that? So, funny like? story. We, we, um, our, my wife Courtney answered an email request, you know, like, uh, showing, you know, looking for a house in Nantucket. And we're like, we're always looking for something new. We have, we have no storage in our house. It's on a slab. You know, we have a really small house out in Tom Devers. Love it. It's great. Yeah. And she saw this, so she applied for it. They called us back, did a Skype interview with the pr producers. They said, we, we want to, Oh, you're it. We want to, we want to do it. This is a month before we even thought about the handlebar. Okay. So once the handlebar got closer, we knew we were going to do it. We looked at our finances and said, we're not going to be able to do both. We're not going to be able to do the handlebar and a new house. So we called oh. the producers up of H the HGTV show, Island Live. Look, the kids <laughs> all want to be on TV. Hi, What's guys. up? <laughs> uh, we See? called the producers up and said, we're not going to be able to do both. We're going to yeah. open up this coffee shop. This was maybe a month before the shoot. And they said, well, it's up to you if you want to buy the house or not. But we're still going to do the shoot. Like you signed, oh. the, you signed the contract. Oh, okay, got it. So, um, you know, the handlebar could have fell through, and then we could have maybe went to the house. And yeah, we, we didn't really know, so we we ended up choosing the handlebar instead. We just couldn't do both. Yeah, okay, okay. That's kind of what happened. Right. And so they they shot the bike tours, the handlebar, our life. Oh, that's awesome. And, but has that helped? I'm sure it has. Yeah, so people definitely. still see it. Yeah, right? people come see out in the summer. Hey, we saw an issue TV. It's great. Uh, but we didn't we didn't know how they how they were going to edit us. Yeah. Right. Or edit our story. Right. Yeah. So were you happy with it? Yeah, we, we we're happy. Yeah. Now, bike paths and bike bike tours. You're you're the guy, man. What a business. Do you have any competition? Not for tours. Um, there's some off-island companies idea. that do the big tours, like yeah. where you come and stay overnight. We yeah. don't do those. We just do daily tours and custom ones. Um, I think the the bike shops on the island are so busy with renting bikes and cars and everything that they do. They don't really have time to mess with the tour. There's a, there's a lot in it. You're right. spending three hours with somebody. It's really intimate and personal. Right. You know what I mean? Right. What's it? What's it like for those people? What would it uh, a tour be like? Not just you don't just don't get on the bike. You you actually take them and do you do you cater for them or how does it we, all yeah, work? Yeah, we, we do we do some crazy tours. You with, do um, custom. You know, in at the beach and we'll have. Um, lunch ready for them, kind of cater oh, really? you know, to just the basic tour where you hop on, come in at 10.30, you're done at 12.30. Okay. You know, just very basic. Is it kind of like going fishing where you show up at 10 o'clock and you're back by 2, yeah. you know, yeah, something like that? It's pretty standard. Yeah. We have we have probably 10 different stops that we go to within yeah. each tour, Yep. Um, but we only choose five to six of them because there's only so much time. Right. So we kind of tweak it depending on who's there. Sometimes we got a bunch of history buffs. Sometimes oh, we have okay. somebody who wants to know more, like the celebrities and the houses. So we kind of, kind of ad lib it each time. And I'm sure that's a growing. I mean, with 40 miles of bike paths, and and I mean this place is just so. Yeah. Technically, it's 32, but you know we got more coming. Oh yeah, but okay, that's. I'm what just it kidding. Is. Yeah, I mean it's in, in the low 30s. Yeah, okay. 
we're I mean we're really safe because we have we have guides and we get to talk to them the safety talk and all that stuff so we don't really have any problems with cars we rarely have any, any issues right and right. Our, our routes pretty safe yeah um, but myself and our interns we commute everywhere during the summer so we see all the problem areas and we see that a bike path that goes behind the duck pond to Orange Street to mm. take the bikes off the truck route is yeah. extremely important to yes. the flow of cars and trucks but also yeah. safety for the bikes that's and right all these little things well there's some controversy right now about that you know mm. about the bikes you know in town and what we could do to make it a little better but don't you think education is really important too for, definitely I mean, if, if we can educate drivers to just be careful because you know it's such a bike heavy place that I, I think there's a there's a way to find balance yeah I think it's education it's a little bit of infrastructure a little bit of enforcement you right, know, right. You know, everybody sees bikes on sidewalks and going the wrong way in Orange Street so it's not just the drivers who have to you know improve their education it's it's the cyclists as well it goes it goes both ways sure and so um, I'm on BPAC the bicycle pedestrian advisory committee I'm the chairman of that so we're trying we're pushing for more stencils yes because stencils they, sh they I, hey the ones at the stop and shop they're great aren't they they are they're not I see them every time and it reminds me it's like even if I don't see a bicycle I'm like okay there's bikes around right. here very good that, so that's one benefit. Subliminally, it Yes, works. it is. It's, that's one benefit. The, the, the other one is if you use them in certain areas to direct traffic. So when, you're, when you go by Cumberland Farms on Orange Street and you're supposed to curve around to the right, there's a sign there that says no bikes. Right. But if you have stencils that are going this way, it's another Very good directional. Point. Definitely. To, Definitely. So it, it serves two good purposes. Good move. Good move. Well, you're a busy guy. What, does your wife work too? She does. Okay, yeah. what does she do? She's executive director at Small Friends. Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. So she's with the, the little ones. Now, what about, you You got any little ones? No, we do not. Okay. No. Well. Th she's got a lot of little ones. There you go. You know, Monday through Friday. I got you. Yeah. Thanks well, thank a lot, you. man. Thank you. This was fun. Wasn't it? I'm telling yeah. you, it is fun. And we did it live. Look. I mean, that qua can you, this is what I'm trying to get to, so that we can, we can alert people. When, when we go live and we want to do more live programming like mm -hmm. this.